Have you ever been blown out of your ever living socks but the hospitality that somebody has graciously bestowed upon you? Well, the title in the book is You Really Didn't Have To, but I'm sure glad you did. And in that, I tell the tale of a friend who invited me and some other friends over for a casual barbecue and who just blessed us beyond anything that we could have imagined. It was a very special night. If you want to read about it, just grab the book, but it would take too long for this, so let's get straight to the point. My friend demonstrated the gift of creative hospitality that her heavenly father gave her. She was really good at hearing God's heart towards others and demonstrating it through creativity. But then she's just taking after her heavenly dad. And I'm going to be reading more today than in the last few because I really can't say it any more than the way that I wrote it in the book. Think about it. When God created the world, he could have provided all the sustenance that we needed in a glass of water, making sure all our nutritional needs were met by that tasteless liquid. It didn't even need to be ice cold. Instead, he created a bounty of colorful food and an endless supply of tastes and textures. He place the greatest nutrition, think about it, in the most vibrant and appealing of foods. Ruby red tomatoes, purple grapes, leafy green vegetables, brilliantly colored fruits. He thought of all of our senses, not just our taste, allowing the scent of roasted meat to trigger our hunger pains. That simple pleasure even of wrapping our hands around a hot mug of hot chocolate on a cold day. That idea of bringing us that pleasure was not lost on him at the beginning of creation. He wanted to bring pleasure and joy to his most prized creation, that being us. He deliberately chose to give us the ability to laugh and to smile. There isn't a culture on the planet that doesn't value a sense of humor, for example. And if you talk to the people who live in certain regions of the world, everywhere from the high Arctic to the Sahara Desert, each culture that is native to that area sees a unique beauty in the creation that surrounds them that might be lost on the rest of us. And not only does God just provide stuff that we can enjoy, he gives us the tools to be creative ourselves so we can create something that we can look at to enjoy and we can create something that brings a sense of community around us when we invite others to enjoy what we've created. How does one say thanks for, to such a generous outpouring? How does one thank our creator whose sole purpose in forming us was just to love us? How does one thank the supreme creator who lowered himself to walk amongst us so that he could show us how to live and how to love? How can we ever express our gratitude for his death and resurrection that opens up the gateway that we closed so we can come close once again to our Creator God. And the only thing that God asks of us, how we can say thanks to Him, is by giving Him our undivided and our complete heart. Words seem rather inadequate. He went far beyond what He needed to do because he loves us. He really didn't need to, but aren't you glad that he did?